Hey, what's going on, dudes and dudettes? I am the Mystical Green Beanie, and today I wanted to do something that I feel like I haven't done in forever, and that's actually talk to you guys about comics and comic books and comic book stuff related directly to comics. And if you're anything like 90% of the population, chances are you probably didn't care about Iron Man before 2008, and in the 11 years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's existence, he's become one of, if not your favorite, superhero. But while the movies are amazing, and as charismatic as Robert Daddy Jr. is, maybe you feel like you want a little extra. Especially since the Armored Avenger that you grew up with is now hanging out on a farm with the other dead pets, which means you probably won't get another Iron Man movie for at least another 20 to 25 years. And because of that, maybe you feel like you need a little more Iron Man in your life. You know, maybe you feel compelled to check out some of his comics to get that extra Iron Man fix. Or maybe you don't, and you know, that's okay too. <coughs> Fucking normies. Anyways, here are a few Iron Man stories in the comics that I think would be perfect for newer readers, such as yourself, if you fit such a description. Number one, Iron Man Into the Mandarin by Joe Casey and Eric Canetti. 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 Connect. Eric Connect. That's what we're gonna go with. Okay, so remember in Iron Man three when you saw the Mandarin for the first time and you were like, "Holy shit, this dude's a badass!" and and then it turned out that he wasn't? Don't hurt the face, I'm an actor. <clears throat> so this comic is a modern-ish retelling of Iron Man's first encounter with the Mandarin. And what's interesting about this story is how it's so different from anything in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and so far removed from even the current era of Iron Man comics. First of all, the story takes place in a time when Iron Man still had a secret identity, and Tony's excuse for why Iron Man was so conveniently buddy-buddy with him was because he was his bodyguard. Second, this is kind of what I think people wanted the Mandarin to be in Iron Man 3. He's a ruthless warlord who wields absolute power on each of his ten fingers. Plus, another cool thing about the story is that, unlike in the movies, the Iron Man armor has limits to its capabilities. It's not a nuke-proof Swiss Army machine gun. And, I don't know, it's just weird seeing Tony struggle, but also very rewarding to watch him use his ingenuity to get through certain situations and learn from his encounters with his enemies. And by this point in time, Iron Man is an Avenger, S.H.I.E.L.D. is an established entity, and... They want Iron Man's help in stopping this psychotic warlord from China that may or may not exist. And the story's really fun, you know, it's almost like if James Bond was a superhero, which is what a lot of Iron Man comics are like. And I don't think you'd be disappointed if you gave this a read. Also, the art is really good to look at. Eric Connect has a weird, cartoony art style that's also really gritty. And it makes you feel like you're reading a throwback piece, but not in a rose-tinted nostalgia kind of way. It's simple, but muddy. Like, if one was to say that this was a story that was being presented through Tony Stark's eyes, he'd be looking at it not as he would like to remember it, but how it was. And I think that's really interesting. Now, I will say it's hard to get your hands on a copy of this because I know for a fact that the book is out of print, but I'm sure that Marvel Unlimited has it. I, I mean, I would assume they do. They better. It, it's, it's literally in the name. Marvel Unlimited. And if not, then it's fine. The internet's a vast place. There's more than just PDFs of expensive textbooks and free porn on here. Number two, Iron Man Extremis by Warren Ellis and Artie Gardov. So if you like Iron Man in the movies, then you'll definitely like the story. Or, at the very least, you'll appreciate it. Because this is the comic that not only reinvented Iron Man in the comics, but was the main inspiration for Iron Man in the MCU. 
particularly the art style. And that's actually because Artie Gardov, the artist of this book, helped design the Iron Man armor for the first two films. Anyways, this is the book that cements Tony Stark as a futurist and a philanthropist who's haunted by his past. He's in the process of building a better future for humanity, but is constantly reminding himself of the blood sacrifices that he's made in order to get there. But not like, you know, voodoo blood sacrifices. It's, it, it's metaphorical. God, I don't know why, but I'm starting to think about Tony Stark getting high with a voodoo priest in New Orleans and hippie flipping like that Coney 2012 dude. Y'all remember that? Like, bro, I, I low-key miss the internet from like seven years ago. Good times. Anyways, uh, the core of the story is that a new techno-organic drug virus thing uh, gets stolen from an R&D lab in Texas and some white supremacists get their hands on it and they unlock the next stage of human evolution. Okay, I... <laughs> Okay, I wrote this script, but saying that last part out loud is really funny. And I'm not sure if that joke was intentional on Warren Ellis' part, but it's it's kind of brilliant. And there's a lot of really interesting social commentary on the military-industrial complex, the way technology is often militarized, the privatization of technology, Hicks and their aggressive tendencies. And at the end of the day, this is just a really good book. Book. And like I said, uh, this lays the groundwork for Iron Man on film. Maybe not in terms of characterization so much, because, you know, Tony in this is far less jokey than RDJ, but thematically, the movies borrow heavily from this book. Number three, Iron Man Ironmonger by Dennis O'Neill, Rich Buckler, Sal Bushima, Luke McDonnell, Herb Trimp, and Mark Bright. So, this is the weird one. This is kind of what the first Iron Man movie is an adaptation of? Pfft, adaptation. Uh, it borrows a couple of plot elements. Uh, the major one in this case is Obadiah Stane, the Ironmonger. So, you know how in the film, uh, Stane is a close friend and business partner to Tony? Well, in the comics, that's not the case. Here, Obadiah Stane is, well, putting it bluntly, Lex Luthor before Lex Luthor was Lex Luthor. And just a little back history before you jump into the story, at this point in time, Tony Stark is not Iron Man. Rhodey is. And the reason for that is because Tony feels like he's too dependent on his technology, and he doesn't feel comfortable wearing armor. Well, that and he is really struggling with his alcoholism at this point. Also, he's no longer in charge of Stark Industries. Stain took it from him. So, yeah, that's the status quo. And what this story is, is Tony getting all of his shit together and taking back his company and being Iron Man again. And I don't want to spoil too much of it because, you know, the ending is really cool. But yeah, uh, this is definitely a classic. And if you like Iron Man, you'll probably like this story. Number four. Iron Man 5 Nightmares Warning, if shilling makes you cringe, skip to this timestamp, because that's all this section's gonna be. So, this is the beginning of Matt Fraction and Sal LaRocca's Iron Man run, which is absolutely amazing, and if at least one of those names sounds familiar, that's because Matt Fraction is one of the writers whose dick is forever in the back of my throat. From Hawkeye to sex criminals, this man is a fucking genius. I haven't read anything from him that I didn't like, and luckily, his entire run on Iron Man is no exception. But on the off chance that you're a crazy person, and you don't take a liking to his brilliant style of storytelling, then I think it's best to start off with the first seven issues. Now, Five Nightmares takes place after the superheroes of a war, and at this point in time, not only is Tony Stark the new director of S.H.I.E.L.D., but he's also become quite the controversial figure. And on top of that, terrorists from all around the world with seemingly no connection to each other have started using suicide bombers. Which isn't really new, if we're gonna be honest about the ugly truth here. But what's different about these cases is that the bombers are using modified Repulsar technology. 
aka the stuff that runs the Iron Man armor. As in, the stuff that nobody on the planet besides Tony Stark is supposed to have. And these events trigger Tony's paranoia regarding his technology and its legacy. This book also introduces a new villain, Ezekiel Stane, the son of Obadiah Stane. And he's a really fascinating character. Uh, Zeke is a brilliant engineer who sells weapons to terrorists. And he has a real beef with Tony Stark because of what happened to his father. But he also has some serious daddy issues. And it's... It's weird. And it's really cool. And this story is not only a great read on its own, but it's also a really solid sequel to Iron Man Ironmonger. Uh, I will say though, Sal LaRocca's art is apparently an acquired taste to some people. I personally really like it because, you know, he was the main artist for Iron Man when I started really getting into comics, but I just wanted to offer that quick little tidbit just in case. But yeah guys, those are some Iron Man comics that I'd recommend for newbies who like the MCU and like Iron Man, but maybe aren't big comic book readers, but want to be. Or, you know, at least for this character. And notice how I didn't put Demon in a Bottle on this list. Uh, I see that on literally every other Intro to Iron Man recommendation list, and for the life of me, I don't know why. That comic is so boring and so stupid. Like, th the actual Demon in a Bottle story is like the last two issues of the current collection. And even in those issues, Tony overcomes alcoholism in like a day. Uh, yeah, no, uh, the stories that I listed in this video are way cooler. Like, way cooler. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. If you are looking to get into Iron Man comics, I hope this helped you. And on the off chance that you have read any of these stories or you have any questions for me regarding Iron Man or whatever, please let me know down below in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, hit the like button, share support the channel, and if you want to see more content like this, all you have to do is subscribe. I'm the Mystical Green Beanie, thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, adios, nachos. Show me what you